Shaka Community Church family with pleasure would love to inform you that we'll start premiering our midweek online series called Morning Dew. Our pastoral team has prepared an amazing message just for you. This series will run every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7 a.m. Don't miss out on this amazing and wonderful experience to kickstart your day. We would love to keep in fellowship with you, grow together spiritually, and pray for you. Ishaka Community Church, connecting people to their destiny. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Uh, very excited to have you this morning. I believe God is yet to speak to us like never before. Uh, this is, uh, my name is Joel Molunji. Uh, I'm blessed to be one of the ministers here at Shaka Community Church. Uh, we love you so much as a church. We love you so much and we want to be in touch with you. We want to connect you. We want to know you. We want to be in touch with you. And uh, if you're watching us now, please m- make it a point to write in the comment section. Make it a point to make sh- tell us where you're watching us from. Make it a point to be able to reach out to us. And this morning, I'll just make a prayer. Wherever you are, just humble yourself and we pray. God, thank you so much because you brought us to this place. Thank you, God, because you've connected us, even on the distances. Some of us are in America, Canada. Some of us are in London. Some of us are in Africa. Wherever we are, God, thank you for connecting us through this air, through, the mid, uh, through this, Father. Even in generations, Father, you connected us years to come. Ten years, people will be watching this. Ten years to come, three years to come, two years, one year. And people will be watching this and connecting to this, Father. Thank you, Lord, because you've connected us in all this way. And we believe, God, you'll get to speak to us. Speak to us, Father, for generations. Speak to us this morning because we believe there's something you're yet to do in this generation. In the name of Jesus Christ, we and believed. Amen. Yes, we love you so much, like I've said. Uh, my name is Joel Molunji. I, I'm blessed to be at, um, one of the ministers at Ishaya Community Church, uh, pastored by Pastor Sam Musigire and Mami Prosi Musigire. Uh, they love you so much, and they send greetings to you, and uh, we believe we, we are what we are because they listen to the call of God on our lives, our parents, and uh, the, our, our parents. And uh, Ishaya Community Church so far has been there for so far, eight years, and we are s- on, almost celebrating our nine years. Yes, we are celebrating nine years of existence. Yes, and we growing and we uh, maturing. We believe God is yet doing a, a, f- a few things uh, in us. And uh, our, our church is located in uh, Ishaka, Uganda, uh, which is I- towards Cabo Range. And y- once in a while, if you pass by Ishaka, you can come and visit us. Once in a while, you can always watch us on YouTube. We're always sending... Uh, we always having a Sunday service from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then we have a Friday service, uh, Ugandan time, that is Ugandan time, East African time. Uh, we have a, a Friday service from um, uh, s- uh, 8, p- 8 p.m. To, ele- to, to 10 p.m. You can always join us and uh, we will be able to st- link up with you and connect with you. And uh, we love you so much. Uh, so one of the things, why I've been saying that word, we love you so much, our theme our, wha- wha- what we stand on is loving God, loving others, and serving the world. And we connect people to their destinies. So I believe you're yet to be blessed. Right now, I request you to get your Bible, get your coffee. This It's a cold morning here in Ishaka, and uh, I'm having my, my cup, of cup here. You can get your coffee, you can get your Bible, and be ready to dive into the Word of God. Today we're going to be reading John chapter 4. John chapter 4, very exciting uh, story. Um, Let's dive into it, John chapter 4, and we shall start straight away from verse 1, so that we get a few backgrounds, and we shall go till where Lord leads us. Yes, John chapter 4, it says, therefore, I, I, John chapter 4, verse, verse 1, it says, therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made, the, and, made and baptized more disciples that, than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples, he left Judea and, and departed again to Galilee. Jesus left Judea and departed again to Galilee. And verse 4 says, but he needed to go through Samaria. Somebody say, there was a need to go through Samaria. There was a need to go through Samaria. Jesus knew it that he needed to go through Samaria. And verse 5 says, so he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sika, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being worried being wearied tired from his journey sat thus by the well. Hallelujah. 
it's okay to be tired. Hallelujah. Somebody tell, you, tell someone, you need a refreshment sometimes. You need to sit by the well sometimes. It was about the sixth hour. That is like uh, very hot. There's a lot of sun. And Jesus and a woman, it is important. You see, th th there's a way this writer, there's a way the writer of John was showing us so many details. But every detail he shows us is very important. It is important. I want you to note that point of the sixth hour. Because this is a very hot hour. People don't come to the well at the sixth hour. It was very hot. So people do not fetch, they will not fetch water. When they say the sixth hour, to our time, it means the noon, 12 noon. People would not fetch water at the sixth hour. But this, at this moment, the Bible says, after showing us that at the sixth hour, Jesus is there. That means Jesus was specific on the time he should be in Samaria. He was specific on the time he should be at the well. Jesus had a purpose to be there. And the Bible is saying, verse 7, and a woman came to draw water. Jesus said to her, you see, it's showing us the sixth hour, and then it's showing us a woman came to draw water. Later on, we shall see that women would not draw water at the sixth hour. But Jesus knew he needed to be there at that specific time. At that specific time, he knew he had to be there. And the Bible say, and Jesus said, Jesus said to her, verse 7, give me a drink, you know, this is a very, 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 very funny thing. Jesus asking, give me a drink. We know Jesus, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the creator of the universe, asking a woman to give him a drink. That, that must be something. There must be, a, there must be something that is coming out of this. Verse 8 says, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. He had sent them away. He knew this errand I'm about to run does not need the disciples. He does not need anyone else. It's me and this woman that we need to meet. Praise Jesus. And then verse 9 says, Then the woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, as a, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, if you knew the gift of God, and who, who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would g have given you living water. I remember I, asked, I told you, why is it Jesus asking, forgive me a drink? Yet he's asking this woman. In other words, he's trying to get something out of her. Verse 11, then the woman said to him, sir, you have, you have, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get the living water? Are you, are you, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it? himself as well as his son and his livestock? Jesus answered and said, to whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I give will, well, I give him will never thirst, but the water I, I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Then the woman said, sir, give me this water that I may thirst not. No, come here to draw. And verse 16 says, Jesus said, go call me your husband and come here. <laughs> it was in Jesus, so dramatic. The woman asks for the water and says, give me the water. And Jesus says, verse 16, go call me, go call your husband and come here. We shall stop there. Somebody say, the, the divine encounter. The divine encounter. That's what we're going to be diving in this morning. That divine encounter. The divine encounter. So let's just humble ourselves. God, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, because you've given us your word. Thank you, Jesus, because we are here to dive into your word, to know more about you, to understand you more, to get to know you more, Father, to get no direction of you, Father. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, direct us, lead us, guide us, Father, as we listen from your word, that you may be able to direct us, Father, as we dive into this. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Somebody say the divine encounter. The divine encounter. You see, what you need in your life is to encounter Jesus. You see, everything that was happening in this scenario was for the intent that Jesus may encounter this woman. What was important was he, that he may encounter this woman. That's why we start out in Samaria, uh, in verse 4, chap, John, chap, James, John chapter 4, verse 4, which says, Jesus needed to go through Samaria. Jesus was not just a wanderer. Every step he made was important. 
he knew. The Bible says many times, I do as my, I see my father doing. I speak as I hear my father speaking. He knew. It, wa it was a moment that was most important that he must encounter this woman, that he must talk and speak to this woman. Because he knew he was carrying something. He was carrying a living water that he had to bring to this woman. Hallelujah. That is what he wanted to do. He wanted to encounter this woman to get this living water. I want to tell you something. Every day we walk in our lives, we move. Sometimes we move. We let things ride us. We let things direct our footsteps. But is it God that actually directs our footsteps? Are we moving because of a divine encounter? Is there someone God wants you to encounter this morning? One, for you to help them like Jesus did. And two, for you to be able to be helped by that person. You see, at the end of this story, you see why Jesus had to go through Samaria. It is not for no other reason, but because he had to encounter this woman. Because this woman would open the door to Samaria. Later on, we shall see it, that even Philip had to encounter, was, was sent to Samaria. But this door was opened, the Samaria door was opened by this woman. Later on, we shall see how she, after encountering Jesus, she went out and became a preacher of the world. She received her purpose. Later on, when you read this chapter, you realize Jesus helped this woman and she turned out and went and preached the gospel to the rest of the people in Samaria and said, come and see this man who has spoken everything about my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God wants you to encounter someone. I remember there was a time I was walking in my life. Uh, I was just, it was just a normal day. And uh, somehow Jesus tells me, somehow God tells me, the Holy Spirit directs me and tells me, go to the bank at this and this time. It was a specific hour. I was supposed to go. Like Jesus, it was a specific hour that I had to go to the bank. That specific hour, that very moment. Maybe, maybe you have that feeling telling you, go to this place, that specific hour. God wants to do something in someone's life. Hallelujah. Because you carry the living word in you. Hallelujah. And Jesus knew that this woman comes to the, is the only one that is at the well at this very moment. And he even sent away his disciples from, from him. And as, 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 as I was walking into the bank, going back to the story, I was walking into the bank and I came to the bank. I was doing my normal, normal business. And just all of a sudden, I'd, someone approaches me and tells me, how do you feel this bank slip? Young man, walking, maybe has just finished his A-level studies. Uh, personally, me, I was at campus by that time and I was studying in KU University and I was, I'd gone to clear my tuition, to pay off my tuition. But that specific hour is what I was led to. And I, I'm just there. And this young man comes to me and asks me, how do I feel this, 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 this bank slip? And uh, all of a sudden, I, I realized, okay, I could just tell him, man, how do you not know how to feel this bank slip? How old, how, how old are you not to do? I could be rude to him. But, you know, I said, let me be humble and just speak to this man politely. I spoke to him. As I'm speaking to him, all of a sudden, I see another older man just behind him speaking to me. And he tells me, Yes, brother, thank you for helping me in a local language in Nunyankori. And I'm, I'm like, okay, this man is even moving with his father, but even the father does not know how to, to fill the bank slip. And at that moment, I realized, okay, you know what? I, I need to be humble and help him. I helped my brother. I helped him, and we, 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 we filled the bank slip together. And we, we became friends. I directed him. I asked him, are you coming to campus for your first time? He told me, yes. I'm coming to campus. This is my first time. I'm just starting out my course. I explained to him and I realized the Holy Spirit guided me to, to get closer to this young man. I did not leave him. I made sure I did not leave him until he was on the line to ready to pay for his tuition. I gave him directions. I told him, get my contact. Be in touch with me. I can be able to help you through campus. I can be able to direct you. And all of a sudden, the father also got interested in me. And as I was walking out of the, of the, 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 camp, my, the bank after I finished this encounter, because I had encountered this young man. This man later on comes in and as I'm walking on my st the streets ready to just walk home, uh, and then they, they come and he had a border border. He came and told me, come and join us on our, on our border border. Border border is like a motorbicycle. And I sat on this motorbicycle and we, were, we went back to campus. Going back to the high to the university, I, I was able to connect and get in touch with these people. I got closer to them. I said, you can call me any time of the day. The father knew now that he has handed his child to someone that was responsible. In the long run, I interacted with this young man three weeks, two weeks down the road. We became very good friends. He told me his weaknesses. He told me his struggles, and I encountered him. And later on, after some time, we were able 
to, to, to get deeper and became very good friends. I gave him a lot of advice, told him how to read books, told him how to go through campus. And this guy told me his issues. And you know, I realized God told me I need let him receive Christ. I led him to Christ. He became a born again and he became a Christian. He joined the church. He became a fiery Christian. He became a leader in the church. And he's a strong leader. He has turned many to Christ. And it was just because of this divine encounter. God wants all you need in your life, like this woman, the Samaritan woman. She needed an encounter with Jesus. And life changes when you meet, encounter Jesus. When you encounter Jesus, right now Jesus is not moving in the world. But Jesus is in us. The living water is in us, inside of us. The Holy Spirit is with us. He said he has put this treasure in earthen vessels that the glory may be of God. He has put that treasure inside you. And he wants you to go out there and encounter someone. And give them living water. Give them solutions. Give them life. Connect them to their destiny. That's what he wants you to do. And even you who is discouraged and discouraged, what he wants you to do is he wants you to go out there and he encounters someone. But you see, sometimes we are not ready to interact with people, new people. We are not ready to listen to people's problems. We are not ready to, we, sometimes we don't, on, on the side of the Samaritan woman, we are not ready to listen to people when they give us advice. Sometimes people are giving us advice, but you feel like, ah, I have my own problems. I don't want to get involved. I don't want to get to know more about their problems. Sometimes we are, we, we, we are stricken. We, we, we meet someone, you are walking, and then someone comes and tries to talk to you, but you, don't, you feel like you don't need anything. But let me tell you something. Your miracle is coming through that person you interact with. Be a social person. Be ready to encounter people. Hallelujah. Be ready to encounter people because God wants you to make relationships. God has your gift. God has your, your, your destiny wrapped into the hands of someone. That person that you're going to meet may be the connection to your course, may be the connection to your finances, to your breakthrough. Today, pray that God may help you connect to de your destiny helper. That God may help you connect to someone that you need to help. Because even after helping them, you never know where they're going to be, how you're going to be a blessing, and how they'll be a blessing to you. God is reaching out, uh, makes, wants us to reach out to people. He says, it is a lie for you to love, to say that you love me, yet you do not love your brother. You are lying. If you're out there and you do not love your brother, don't be so busy. Listen, don't be so busy not to know. No, don't be so busy not to talk to people. Don't be so busy into your own world not to interact with people. Because you see, people are, are the, the step to your next destiny. People are the step to your direction. People are what, are, are what are going to change your life. You see, this woman did not notice at the, at the, at the beginning that Jesus, she was talking to Jesus. Because she, the Bible says, the Bible says in verse 10, if you knew the gift of God, someone, Jesus, asked the, uh, Jesus asked her for a drink and she, she was saying, why don't you draw for yourself? And you see, Jesus says, if you knew the gift of God, sometimes people, the, the rich man that you want to, to talk to, the, the rich one, husband that you want to talk to, sometimes erupt into a simple human being dressed in craft shoes. The eunuch's husband may not come with a car, with a Benz, keys with a Benz, but your husband may come in a simple nature, in a simple way, but your wife may be the waitress, but she may just be there for a moment. But how you treat her matters. Because you are encountering people. How you treat people matters. Because you are encountering them. How you treat people is very important. Hallelujah. I remember there was one time uh, I was, I was, I'd come to church and uh, in church we have we have uh, administrators, we have uh, choir leaders in our church. And one of these times we had had a change of power due to the lockdown, a change of leadership, and we had a new administrator. So uh, since I was in lockdown, I didn't really know. Since I was not at home, uh, since I was not at campus, at university, at church, at that moment I was not there for a year. I didn't know who the leader, the administrator was of the church. So I come because I used to, I know how to operate some of the sound machines and uh, engineering. I come to church and <laughs> I encounter this young man, by that time he had already been appointed as an administrator, but I didn't know at that moment. So I encountered this young man. I, I love him so much. He's now my friend. And uh, I found him in the sound room. 
You see, the people that usually work in the sound room are not the administrators, are not the, 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 the ones that run the whole show, they're not the ones that hold the microphone daily. They are usually very, very humble people that, hold the, that are there behind helping and making things run. By the way, we have great people on the microphones, on the, on the, on the cameras. We have, I usually, many times, God gave me a chance that I used to be behind the cameras, I used to be behind the, the, the technical team. And that is where the real service is. But sometimes we don't regard the service. I thank God for my brother Tyson, my brother Peter. Eh? I believe God is working them something through their lives. They are the reason that why you're watching what you're watching. And this moment, it was now my brother, the administrator, that was behind uh, that sound room. And I come in because of my pride. I did not realize that he is the administrator. I come and shout at him. I, I'm like, bro, what are you doing? You should be doing this and this and this and this. And this young man is like, ah, okay, let me not really get involved in this. So later on, uh, we sit in the meeting, we usually have a leaders meeting. I come in the leaders meeting and I, I think, I thought everyone else was sitting in the leaders meeting. And I realized this guy that I was shouting at in the sound booth, that I was giving directions in the sound booth, that I was telling, speaking too harshly in the sound booth because maybe some things were not going right, was actually just volunteering because there were no sound people at that moment because of lockdown. He was just volunteering. <laughs> and in the long run, I realized, eh, wow. He is actually the administrator. He was the one chairing the meeting. I repented, child of God. I repented. You see, the people you are yet to meet, the people that you treat harshly, the people that you speak to, may be the next president. Be, be careful how you treat people. Later on, I repented. I even spoke to him and told him, Brother, forgive me for how I spoke to you harshly, but I've learned my lesson. Nowadays, anyone, whatever position you, you are at, I am ready to do anything. Yes, I'm ready to serve in any position. But even any person, even if you meet a person on the roadside, be ready to treat them because you may be speaking to angels. Abraham welcomed angels into his life. And these are the people that prophesied into him, into his life, and said, this, year, this time next year you'll have a child. They're the ones that brought the seed of the child into his life. I want to warn you. You need a divine encounter, but you need to treat people well. This morning, as you're walking out, make it a point. I believe God wants you to meet someone that is going to help you connect to that business deal that you want to. God is going to make you meet someone that is going to solve that challenge that you've been having. God is going to make you meet someone that you may be able to help out, like Jesus helped this woman. God is going to help you meet someone. There's a divine encounter you're yet to have. Imagine how many people you've missed out because you mistreated them. Imagine how many connections you've missed out because you did not realize and notice and help them. Maybe God spoke to you and said, extend a handshake, greet that person, and you refused. Today, I want you to be alert. Be focused that you may be able to meet your destiny through someone. That you may be able to encounter because what you need is a divine encounter. The divine encounter is not going to come like someone in... in, in Rest up in, in white as an angel. No. It may be someone in rugs. But that may be the person that connects you to your destiny. Today God wants you to get your destiny. But you need to be humble to receive people well. You need to be humble to receive people and encounter them well. Like this woman, if she had known Jesus, she would not even waste time. She would tell him her problems there and then. Hallelujah. She would tell him her problems there and then. And she'll receive her solution there and then. But this morning, we're going to pray that God may open your eyes. That when you meet people, you may be able to humble yourself. I thank God that he taught me this. And I, I'm praying that he teaches me this. And I pray that you learn from our mistakes. Usually I realize that we as preachers, we go through things <laughs> so that we can be able to preach other people. But I pray that you may not do the same mistake I've made in my life. Or that you may not do the same mistake you've been making. Let God open your eyes. Let us make that prayer. God, thank you so much for us this morning. Thank you, Father, because you've given us your word. And we pray, God, let us be able to have a divine encounter with someone this morning. Let someone encounter someone, God. Let us encounter people that are going to change our lives. Let us encounter people that are going to be deliver us. Let us encounter people that are going to take us to the next level, Jesus. Let us encounter people and give us the strength and the wisdom to be able to treat them well in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you're taking us to our destiny. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe it. 
Amen. I believe God is going to make you meet people, presidents, but they may be wrapped up in rugs. They may not, this woman met God himself, but he was wrapped up in a human being, in a normal nature. I, I pray that God opens your eyes to see them. Today, not very far, today. The day you watch this, let God help you and give you wisdom on how to treat them. Even if it's in the next future, practice on how to treat people well. This is Shara Community Church. We love you so much. Uh, connect to us more. Uh, be able to reach out to us. Watch us on YouTube. Watch us on, uh, connect to us wherever you are watching us from. We love you so much. Watch, uh, be able to connect to us next week, the same time. Uh, we love you so much. Uh, we believe God is yet to do a work in you. Uh, if you have a prayer request, write it in a comment section. Or if you want to connect us directly, just connect to us on Facebook, Ishara Community Church. Uh, we shall be giving us our contacts will be spreading down on the screen so that you can reach out to us if you need prayers in the name of Jesus we prayed and believed thank you Lord because you're with us thank you Jesus we prayed and believed in your name we have come here in your name and we believe you're speaking to us next time morning dew series see you next time same time uh, we love you Shaka Community Church be blessed <laughs>